Move right along with our next paper, uh, Endoscopic Infrared Coagulation, a broad range of novel and practical utility ranging from internal hemorrhoids to nose, presented by Dr. Elizabeth McLemore. Thank you very much, Dr. Clement and Dr. Hammond and the Society for us to present our data today. Let's just see. So I have no financial disclosures. So infrared coagulation is a well-established treatment option for symptomatic internal hemorrhoids. Uh, in addition, alternative treatment options such as sclerosis or rubber band ligation are equally as effective and have been studied multiple times. And across the board, it seems to be that infrared coagulation is less painful. Um, so the difficulty with these office-based procedures is they frequently require multiple instruments, an, an anoscope, adequate lighting, which seems to be my biggest impingement at times, and uh, specialized instruments. So the typical clinical scenario is you evaluate a patient for rectal bleeding, and frequently the patient needs a colonoscope or flexible sigmoidoscopy either for um, inappropriate colorectal cancer screening or just a suspicion of a potentially higher or more proximal source of the bleeding. So unfortunately, you put the patient through a bowel prep, which makes their symptoms of internal hemorrhoids even worse, and you have yet to even do anything for their hemorrhoids. And taking these equipment to the area where you're performing the colonoscope is frequently challenging. The uh, visualization and lighting in the endoscopy suites is also extremely challenging. So an extremely nice solution is endoscopic delivery of infrared coagulation. Um, it's currently FDA approved in human subjects and has a wide range of both uh, FDA approved as well as off-label uh, hemostatic applications. So let's see if this, so this is just, oh, I'm gonna have to have some help with the video here. If you'll just play the video. This is just a quick demo. Oh, they've got it. Great, just, just a quick demo. Your straightforward flexible sigmoidoscope or colonoscope going to place into the anus and rectum and retroflex. You can place the light guide through the flexible sigmoidoscope or colonoscope and have extremely good visibility, access, and treatment for your internal hemorrhoids with the infrared coagulation. And you don't see the hemorrhoids shrink quite like this, but, but just for a schematic representation. All right, so the equipment necessary for this device is a portable control box. It's foot controlled. You have complete control of the energy delivery. Uh, the conduit is flexible, fiber optic. It's a light guide. You need at least a channel of uh, 3.2 millimeters is, is the light channel. You need a 3.7 millimeter instrument channel, which is your standard adult colonoscope or flexible sigmoidoscope. So the methods, we prospectively collected data in a non-randomized fashion both gastroenterologists, general surgeons, and colorectal surgeons performed the procedure. And uh, patients were asked to record their symptom uh, and assess the severity of these symptoms in a uh, data sheet. The symptoms were bleeding, prolapse, pain, itching, burning, and soiling. And they were also asked to, scare, scale, to, excuse me, to score these on a scale of zero to 10 in severity. Patients were used at their own controls, both before treatment and then a six week post treatment assessment scoring. The uh, internal hemorrhoids were graded using the Banov grading system, grade one through four or first degree through fourth degree, and mainly the differentiating factor is just the degree of internal hemorrhoid prolapse. So the inclusion criteria are basically healthy patients with rectal bleeding for at least three months or greater, and patients who had undergone a colonoscopic exam or flexible sigmoidoscope in the past to rule out proximal sources of bleeding. Patients were excluded basically to eliminate confounding factors, other causes of bleeding, unhealthy patients, high-risk patients. And then the patients were asked if they had these symptoms, yes or no, bleeding, prolapse, pain, itching, burning, or soiling. And then if they had those symptoms, they were asked to score them on a scale of zero to 10, 10 being the most severe pain or symptom rather. The technique endoscopically can deliver with uh, the infrared coagulation. You retroflex the scope. You can apply anywhere from a three to five second energy pulse, and you do it in an overlapping W fashion over the internal hemorrhoid. And notice the proximal nature, and this is probably why infrared hurts less, is because we're not sucking in distal to the dentate line where the pain fibers change significantly. So I think the application of infrared coagulation and now with the endoscopic delivery is a very nice system. So the patients that we evaluated, there were 55, 40% were female. The predominant uh, number of patients had symptoms greater, uh, from zero to 10 years. 
Also, um, the predominant grade of hemorrhoids was grade two and three. Their symptom assessment survey, the majority of patients either stated they had frequent or occasional blood with stools, straining with bowel movements, constipation, hard and firm stools, and then very few um, ascribed to the other symptoms that we were following. And when you compare the pre with a six-week post-follow-up treatment symptom survey, all of the parameters actually improved, which was quite, um, uh, was, which was impressive. We expected the bleeding to improve and maybe the prolapse to improve, um, but all of the uh, symptoms improved significantly. And this is, again, just to drive the point home that all, all symptoms improved. So in conclusion, endoscopic infrared coagulation is a safe and effective therapy for internal hemorrhoids. There's absolutely no... Um, debate that there's improved visibility compared to anoscopic guided therapy. It's efficient. You can perform a diagnostic colonoscopy at the same time as treating the reason that the patient came to your office in the first place. And uh, also there's also a broad range of off-label use, uh, primarily in the form of hemostasis, so angi angiodysplasia, radiation proctitis, as well as uh, utilization of this instrument for minimally invasive surgery and natural orifice surgery. I'd like to thank my collaborators, Dr. Epstein, Siddiqui Rai, Basu Tabu, and Dr. Amorthy. Thank you very much for your time. Any questions from the, any questions from the floor? Uh, I'd like to ask one question. You, when you have a hemorrhoidectomy, you always are concerned about pelvic sepsis, and you didn't report any of that. Is there any, what is the risk of pelvic floor sepsis in the setting of uh, coagulation and with infrared? It's extremely minimal in the office space, or what we term the office based procedures, so sclerosing agents, rubber band ligation, and infrared coagulation. It's less than 1%, and we didn't experience any of that in our patients. Uh, Julian Otti from Chicago. Uh, congratulations, <laughs> interesting. I'd like to know if there is a limit in size. It means uh, the technique is effective uh, for any, uh, any size of the hemorrhoids or if a large size, uh, the coagulation is incomplete. And how can you establish if the coagulation is, is complete and uh, do you do a check uh, uh, after a few days or a patient that needed more treatments? Those are all great questions. And in general, I tell my patients for these office-based procedures, they can, require, they can expect to require anywhere from three to nine sessions. Um, and it seems to be fewer sessions required with the infrared coagulation. And um, we don't check for complete coagulation with ultrasound, but you can actually see the tissue coagulate from that nice pink mucosal surface to a more uh, white Eschgard blanched tissue. And depending on the grade or the size of the hemorrhoid, you just create a wider lacuna or that W overlap fashion of your infrared coagulation application. Thank you very much. Thank you. Nice and done.